Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I welcome you all back uh, to our Sunday morning session. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we have completed the two sessions in our two books or two course books of uh, this course. And then Quran and Salah, the easy way was the first one. And second was 80% uh, of the words. Now we are going on to, inshallah, cover 90% of uh, the word. Okay, so there was some uh, issue with the uh, YouTube. So maybe we are not, we'll not be live today on YouTube. We'll try and see if we can upload this recording on the uh, YouTube uh, after some time. That's why my urge was that uh, everybody join today. Now, that we will start. Yeah. So, are you able to see my screen? In the Hamlilla, he wants the Inu who want to stop for who want to win over here when I talk to Law Ali when the Ungu will lie him in Shuri and to see now in Sayyah the Armanina. My Yahdi Hilla who fell a modilla, or my Yubin who fell a hand. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك وإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ترى العمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدع الدلالة وكل الدلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأمة من لثاني يقه قولي so today inshallah we are starting the third course course three we are on the page six of the Hafizi Mashaf, and uh, we are going to be taking the pointer A, that is the uppermost part of the page. And inshallah, we will be covering ayat number 38 and 39 today. So, since we are starting the new course, what are the objectives of this course? The first, second course, we have finished the first five pages of the Quran. The objectives of this course will be to study the next five pages of the Quran. Ayat wise, uh, we'll be starting from ayat number 38 and inshallah reach ayat number 76. Okay. So as we see on the first page of this, we have 33 new words in the sixth page. And seventh page, we have 33 new words. Eighth, we have 36. And after that, it goes on reducing to just 29 and 25. So the number of new words coming will go on reducing. Approach will be exactly the same as it was in course two, uh, where we did the first one to 37 ayat. Uh, part A will have about four lessons per page, and the next five pages uh, will have will be covered in twenty lessons. Part B will have grammar, and in this book we will be covering the mazid fee verbs, which occur in Quran in almost every line. <clears throat> so no eight words per line of the Quran at the end of the course. That is no ninety percent of the words when we start of the eleventh page of the Quran. Okay, so the new words uh, on the 11th page will be just 17, that way, inshallah. Average, uh, less than 15 words per page or almost one word per line. That will be the number of new words that we have after this course is over. That's why this would be covering approximately 90% of the uh, Quranic book. So we have been learning this way itself uh, with pointers and phrases for easy learning of the vocabulary. What is the technique uh, we have to do? How are we going to learn when we are studying any phrase? We use the R, 5S, and 10. Right? This is 5 R, R, which is relax. 5S, use all the five senses, which means you hear it, see it, smell it, taste it, touch it, feel it, imagine the action of the verbs and images of the nouns. Uh, spend 10 seconds at least and say it loud. So 
saying it loud also uh, emphasizes and the, your memory gets better and you will remember better so relax five senses all use all your five senses be there be alert be aware spend 10 seconds at least on it and say it aloud of course revise daily the more you revise the better you will get so uh, these are the objectives that we have we have seen uh, almost as we saw 90% of the words will be covered <clears throat> and then how to apply quran to our lives in all the ayat that we have taken till now we have had some kind of plans or plan of action on how we are going to be uh, implementing this in our lives and this book is basically focused on the mazid fi verbs which we had not taken till now now we have a sound ground uh, with a three verbs being done properly and then we went on to the weak verbs to see the difference on how a little alphabet change can cause the whole uh, change in the conjugation pattern and that's why we memorized those particular seven eight verbs which had typical uh, kind of a sequence then 200 plus quran related spoken arabic sentences for effective learning so like we do whatever verb we get we we try to speak with those uh, letters so that we get understanding better of those so coming back now this uh, is the first five pages was the right hand and the next five pages are covered by the left hand and when we we are seeing it ourselves so it is like this when we are watching our hands the first five fingers were like this and now the next five fingers are going to be like this now the sixth page is here and the seventh page is here so these will be together ninth and eighth will be together and the last is the thumb when we are keeping it this way the first page is here and the tenth page is left thumb so the sixth page basically has the result of the guidance that adam alayhi salam got and then it is followed by the dawa to the bani israil and the order of for them to do good deeds and the last part is uh, an order for us to fear the day of judgment so the the sixth page basically has again four pointers so if we consider the left hand and this upper part is the result of the guidance which inshallah we will be taking today second is going to be dawa to the bani israil and the order for them to do good deeds and then last is the fear uh, order for them to fear the day these are the four pointers on the sixth page guidance bani israil good deeds and the day so the, to make it in a sentence guidance to bani israil to do good deeds for the day this will summarize the whole sixth page for us guidance to bani israil to do good deeds for the day the guidance is the result of the guidance second is the advice to the bani israil or dawa to the bani israil uh, exhortation to for them to do good deeds and remembrance of the day and fear the day the whole sentence becomes guidance to bani israil to do good day that's a sixth page completely covered we'll be covering it in four sessions inshallah so let us uh, begin so the first pointer on the sixth page is the result of the guidance that is a pointer and the word single word keyword is the guidance okay. so linking it with the previous verses that we had talked about allah talked about the creation of adam alayhi salam and the test in which iblis made him slip and adam alayhi salam repented and allah taala accepted the repentance and as we have seen last time allah taala uh, gave him the words of the tauba and how to do tauba that was also taught to adam alayhi salam the lessons that we are going to uh, have in these two ayat today is that adam alayhi salam was sent down as khalifa on the earth and guidance is from allah alone those who follow it will enter jannah and those who reject it will enter hell so how easy the quran is the new words are only very few and to learn them is easy and we have been learning it with the phrases so inshallah we'll be learning it the same way there are two main challenges uh, to learn the quran the vocabulary and the grammar pointers and phrases help you learn the vocabulary the tpi and the spoken arabic will help you learn the grammar let me part b so this point will be what are the pointers and phrases so we are going to see the word for word and phrase for phrase translation as we have been with that inshallah we begin the ayat proper for the day a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahim الرحمن الرحيم قلنا 
ربطوا منها جميعا فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن اتبع هدايا فمن اتبع هدايا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. So the words we already know and these are all the uh, words which we've already done. Kulna is Kulna. We said the TPI will be all of us. We said but here Allah Ta'ala is referring to himself and using the royal plural Na. Kulna we said uh, we are seeing that the ayn kalima of ha ihbitu has a kasra so if we stop it kulna it will be ihbitu and the same word has gone before ihbitu uh, it will come again uh, which means to go down being repeated here but when it is uh, joined with the kulna it will be kulna bitu kulna bitu we said ihbitu go down min ha min ha from it so this is the order. The wow here indicates that it is plural, more than three. Adam alayhi salam, Bibi Hawa, and Shaitan. These are three, and we know that in Arabic, when there is a, a plural, it will be uh, more than three. Three or more than three. Okay, so kul nahbitu minha jami'a. Jami'a, all of them. All. Jami'a means all together. So they were said or ordered all of them together to go down. Jami'a. Right? So, you heard this is the order which Allah Ta'ala had given Adam alayhi salam. And again, Allah Ta'ala is telling them, now go down from minha. This ha here is feminine. And this ha here refers to jannah. And that's why if you see in bracket, the word jannah is there. But in the words, there is no jannah. So because of these attached pronouns, we should uh, be able to understand what is the uh, meaning that is meant here. So, kul nahbitu minha jami'a. We said, ihbitu, go down minha from it. From her, it should be ha means her, but this ha is for Jannah. Jami'a, all of you. Ma, for then, or it is condition of what is going to come. For imma, when or whenever. Ya'ti yannakum. Ya'ti we have already seen means to come. Ya'ti yannakum. Kum is to you all, and whenever comes to you all, minni, from me. Min, we already know min is from minha from her minni from me. This we have seen in the first book itself. Okay. Here there is an extra noon with a shadda. We have to do gunna on. This is noon of emphasis. Noon of emphasis. This noon is the noon of emphasis, wherein uh, we want to emphasize that this is going to come. We'll come to the meaning of why this emphasis is, is required. So, <clears throat> so we said, go down minha from it, from her. This her is going to be Jannah. Jami'a, all of you together. For imma, then whenever yati comes, then noon shadda yati yanna surely comes. Kum to you all, minni from me. What comes from me? Hudan means guidance. So whenever guidance comes from me, you have the guidance is in the uh, Nakira form or the not the al form, not the definitive form, indefinite form, right? which means that guidance could keep coming. And this shadda also indicates the emphasis, as I told you, for imma definitely, surely. The guidance will come. So this also indicates that Allah is going to give guidance to everybody. Whether we are going to take it or no, it depends on us. So this uh, noon with tajdeed is a noon for emphasis. And Allah Ta'ala is using that surely guidance is going to come. So in this translation, if you see down, the surely is not mentioned. And when guidance comes to you, but this noon here is, is for emphasis. And this emphasizes that each and every soul is going to get guidance. So, whenever he gets guidance, for imma, whenever, you will surely get guidance, minni from me. So, 
Allah Taala is going to give guidance to each and every soul. Kunan guidance. Okay. Faman then whoever. Here it is again another interesting thing here to see is that man is in, is for singular. Man who, right? Faman then who? Tabi'a follows. Ittiba. We know the word ittiba in Urdu means to follow. Faman ittiba huda ya. It is actually huda yi, but now we know with the week of learning that the ya here is a uh, alif maksura hudan as we have seen here again hudan. So this huda yi becomes huda ya, and that is my guidance. Okay, my guidance is huda ya, but minni had a yi because it has a kasra before it. Okay, so. Here Allah Taala is telling that definitely everybody is going to get guidance from me, and whoever follows the guidance, it is not just that the guidance is there and it is from Allah Taala. It is the ittiba of this guidance which is which is required. And if that ittiba is there, then what will happen? We'll just see next. So this fa is again conditional fa. Hudan faman then whoever tabi'a tabi'a follows hudaya my guidance. Fala, then not. Only if the guidance is followed, then not. Khawfun alayhim. Khawfun is fear. Again, if you see this, khawfun is in uh, the ma, right? Fala khawfun alayhim. No fear will be on them. Wala and not whom they all yeh zanun. They all will be not sad. they will not be grieving okay so uh, uh, a rough translation uh, of this ayat will be fa imma kul nahbitu min hajmi'a allah taala said we said that go down all of you from it from it is this jannah because it is ha imma yannakum then whenever comes to you surely comes to you minni from me again what it indicates that the hidayat has to be followed only when it comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if there will be a lot of people giving you a lot of hidayat in a, in a in a daily life also a lot of people tell you do this do that or do don't do this don't do that but what we have to analyze is that if this hidayah if this guidance is coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then only we have to do ittaba follow it okay but unfortunately what happens is we are doing ittiba of our nafs we are doing ittiba of a lot of people and whatever they are guiding or whatever they are saying we try to follow that third allah taala is giving you two promises one is with this noon noon shadda where allah taala is saying that surely you are going to get guidance and whenever you get guidance faman and whoever receives guidance so this man is again in singular form what it indicates the singular form indicates that everybody is going to get guidance and each individual is responsible for his own guidance or misguidance allah taala is saying surely guidance is going to come and it is going to come from me and if you are going to do ittiba of this guidance then these things are going to happen what is going to happen fala khawfun alayhim is the first thing the second thing wala hum yahzanun these are the two things that are going to happen if you are going to do ittiba of the hidayat of from allah subhanahu wa taala okay and not the uh, waswasa that shaitan is is going to give so let us again come to this first part fala khawfun again here if you see this khawfun is used in the noun form this khawfun here is used in the noun form and indefinite it makes it indefinite and yahzanun is in the verb form and we know that when in the present tense in arabic the verbs when it is in present tense it could either mean present or it could mean future two things yeah. present tense and future tense mm -hmm. so here the grief and sadness is come uh, in the verbal form and the khauf is come in the noun form okay. why it is come that way please mute your mics okay khaufun alayhim so one is there is allah taala uh, could have just said la khawfun okay which means that there is no fear or that would mean no no not any fear but here allah taala is using alayhim alayhim okay la khawfun means no fear but la khawfun alayhim 
I just explain you the difference is just simple grammatical uh, English that is uh, used. Uh, if if somebody is saying "khaufun," uh, is fearful about something, but when it is said "no fear on him," which means there is actual no uh, need for any uh, fear. It is like if a child is uh, playing with a snake, the child doesn't know that there is the snake is dangerous. So the child is not fearing at all. Okay, but. we know that there is fear on that child because of the snake okay so the condition is such that that the situation is such that there is fear for that child because of the snake that is khaufun alayhi one is that we fear for so many things in this life or maybe so many things later on the so khauf is is present in us and khauf is for futuristic things man is always fearful about something that is to come okay but that necessarily may not be real fear when we say khaufun alayhim which means that actually there is no fear on them so if if somebody is uh, on the other side say if a child is playing with a play uh, or a toy snake right but he is getting afraid of the toy snake because it looks very dangerous so the child is fearing khaufun but actually there is no khaufun alayhim which means that there is no fear on it because it's a basically a toy snake right this is a little difference on allah taala telling that there is allah taala could you just say la fala khaufun which means there's no no fear but allah taala is saying khauf la fala khaufun alayhim which means there is no fear on them which means actually there is no fear though a person might be concerned about his akhira though the person might be uh, in that uh, maidan hashar will be fearful about what is going to happen and and fear is actually uh, is is actually part of our living because allah taala says at lot of other places that they were fearful in this world and they feared standing in front of the their rab so fear is an integral part of of our uh, of our iman but when allah taala saying fala khaufun alayhim actually there is no need for fear right so i hope you understood what i'm trying to say if not inshallah i can elaborate that uh, a little later if you have not understood it and then comes the words wala hum and not they yahzanun and they will not be sad right so again as i said khauf is something which is futuristic which is of fear of things which are to come and man is feared what is going to happen and what is not going to happen and uh, grief and sadness huzn yahzanun is of the things that have already passed so sadness is something of uh, the thing that somebody something has already occurred and now the person is sad because of that occurrence that indicates the past uh, things that uh, that are uh, that have gone a uh, man could be sad for the fact that he did not do what allah taala had sent him to do okay but allah taala is saying that if you follow my guidance and if you obey my guidance and surely guidance is going to come from me these are the three main take take aways from these ayat that surely allah taala is going to guide and whoever is going to do ittiba following of this guidance which is coming from allah subhanahu wa taala not from other people then there is no fear upon them and then there is no reason that we should be grieving because man will grieve regretful okay i should have done this i should have prayed five times i should have given my zakat properly i should have uh, not done haram things i shouldn't have sinned but if the ittiba is followed then there is going to be no grief on such people okay so this is what uh, the imports that we have to take from uh, this ayat which actually is being uh, told to our uh, father and of course for kum if you see now here again kum is is for all of the three that were sent down to uh, earth that is adam alayhi salam and his progeny and we would come in his progeny and bibi hawa and shaitan okay. all of this uh, are are uh, the uh, are being addressed to in this particular ayat okay. Okay, so we already went through the words. Ehbitu is go down. It's a plural form, third person plural. Minha from it. Ha is for Jannah. Jamia, all of you. For imma, it is the condition now. For imma yatiyan nakum, and whenever comes, surely comes to you, right? So this surely should be added. So then guidance. Paman, then whoever or whomsoever. This is for singular and each and every person. Man is for singular. Okay. Allah Taala could have said. فالذين تبعه 
then all those who follow no allah taala is put this thing on an individual for man and whoever so it is for each individual not for a, a people as such aman tabi'a hudaya so each individual is going to get hidayah and if he does it tiba tabi'a it comes from following uh hudaya is my guidance allah taala's guidance fala khawfun then he does not have any khawf on upon him and uh, he does not agree okay? this is the second time allah taala mentions go down the first time was because of the slip of uh, so because the slip which shaitan made uh, adam alayhi salam uh, happened and uh, after that adam alayhi salam repented and allah taala asked them to go down as a part of the original plan to uh, appoint a khalifa on the earth so it was the original plan unlike the christian thinking where they call it original sin right so allah taala's plan was there that he is going to send adam alayhi salam down and that is why he said it so allah taala says minni uh, hudan guidance from me and hudaya my guidance so only such people who follows allah's guidance will have neither fear nor grief this shows how extremely important it is to know and follow allah's book and sunnah of his messenger and not follow any unauthentic practices okay. <clears throat> we have a lot of unauthentic practices being followed we have to try and see if that guidance is from allah and if it is from allah we have to follow it and allah taala has taken the guarantee of only one man on earth that allah taala is saying that this man doesn't say of his own uh, own accord it is whatever we want he says so whatever the prophet says is included in this because that is where the guidance is going to come from okay, jannah is the place of absolute happiness there will be no fear of any danger in the present or in the future so as i said fear is something of the future and grief is something of the past okay, so they will have absolute peace in jannah there will be no grief about any loss in the past that is they will be blessed with absolute happiness so with that we'll take one more hadith uh, narrated uh, ibn umar that allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that when the people of paradise have entered paradise and the people of fire have entered the fire death will be brought and will be placed between the fire and the paradise and then it will be slaughtered and a call will be made that oh people of paradise no more death the people of the fire no more death the people of the paradise will be will have happiness added to the previous happiness and the people of fire will have sorrow added to the previous sorrow because now the people of paradise will know that they are going to live in this blissful situation forever and the people of the hell fire will be more sorrow because now they'll know that they cannot escape from this situation that they are in <clears throat> So with this, I would uh, request somebody to just uh, take this ayat and translate it. Who want to volunteer? Doctor Sir, you want to volunteer? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل نحبط منها جميعا فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن تبع هدايا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون गाइडेंस फमंतिया Whoever follows Hudaya, my guidance, fala khaufun alaihim, and then there will be no fear on them, fala hum yahzunun, and nor will they grieve. Okay, mashallah, good. Do you think this uh, when you said tabia, it it sound as if you are saying a ya? It should be aman tabia, tabia, ain, ain. It's not tabia. It's tabia. Right, it comes from ittaba, and the root words are ta, ba, and ain. The ain should uh, reflect. It was sounding as if tabia, uh, like a ya. Tabia. Well, the rest things, yeah, tabia. 
Oh. Repeat again. Tabia. 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 That's right. So it was sounding as if it was Tabia. So it should be Tabia. Tabia. Alhamdulillah. So. Acha, sir, mm-hmm. one example of Khawfun and Yahzunun. I read and uh, in, in that if there is a person who is critically ill, mm-hmm. the relative of that are under fear of his death mm-hmm. and after his death mm-hmm. they they have got uh, griefs that, mm-hmm. that is called yasmanun so that was an example of this i read in one of the book okay of this is just uh, this is just one example uh here ratna is not giving any particular example and here uh, uh, death is not being being referred directly as such uh here it is just the the fear because see fear is of something which is uh, of futuristic it could be any as you pointed out that could be fear one reason death. for the fear yeah so that would be one but reason for critically ill and the, huh. the they were fearing of, of his death okay so, right. so there was right. a hope mm-hmm. and after his death they they grieved so right. there is a yazun so Correct. example in that i read right right that that is what i'm saying that could be one example a man has lot of things to do in life and he has lot of fears because of those things but those fears are all futuristic but uh, here are they saying that whoever is going to follow the guidance then there is no hope on him right so you understood the the the, the fact why alaihim is used yeah. as to just without alaihim you understood that fact yeah yes yeah. okay. so wala hum yahzanun and they will not be grieving so inshallah with this we go to the second aya for today uh <clears throat> ഉലിഹാലിദ So most of the words are already known to us i think there's not nothing really new in this wal ladina and all those who ladina makes it plural and that's why kafaru is used in the plural form kafara kafaru right plural so wal ladina kafaru so all those who disbelieved kazabu and denied bi ayatina bi with ayatina our ayat so whoever disbelieved and uh, denied our ayat our science we have seen what are the signs the signs are whatever we saw mosquito la tala said was a sign and each and every ayat of the quran is a sign the sun the moon the fruits the air the earth the, the, the everything that is happening along all around the whole universe are ayat of allah and allah tala is saying that whoever is believed and denied our signs ulaika ashabun nar they are the ashab companions ashabun nar companions of the fire hum fiha khalidun hum fi fiha in it in what in the fire because nar is feminine that's why uh, this ha refers to this nar this ha is because of this nar because nar is feminine khalidun they will stay in it forever so khalid we know is active participle khalidun and with the waun noon it becomes plural khalidun they will remain in it forever okay, so wal ladina kafaru wa kazzabu again uh, in this particular book we are going to be studying the mazid fi forms so one here if you should see there is a shadda kazzabu kazzabu so it is the basic words are kaf lam and ba right so kaziba is the basic word ka bi ba right but here we are getting an extra shadda and in this particular format whenever we get shadda we always get a fatha and this will be dropped whether the the basic word had a kasra or a fatha doesn't matter you'll always get a fatha the past tense will be kazaba kazaba this shadda is what is going to make it intensive 
and the action is done on somebody else. Okay, so we'll come to it. We are going to study each verb. So, uh, simple example is Alima. Alima means he knew, and Alama means he taught. Right, so that becomes intensive with the shadda. The meaning changes because now the action is done on somebody else. Then I will take it. I'm just giving a, a small uh, example to understand it. Because we are going to take this in details, inshallah. So don't uh, worry about that at the moment. So well, ladina kafaru wa kathabu bi ayatina. Ulaika ashabun nar, ashabun nar. Now ashabun nar is companions of the fire. This particular formation is called uh, mudaf mudaf ilahi, where the noun will be in. Kasra nari, and first we'll have just single. One of the I mean is dot. It should be ashabun, but because of this combination, it becomes ashabun nari, which means companions of fire, like baytullahi, house of Allah. Ashabun nari, companions of fire. So because of this mudaf mudaf ilahi, in English translation it will come off. So this is the called mudaf mudaf ilahi. We'll take such more examples as and when they come. But this combination is called mudaf mudaf ilahi. Ashabun nadi, companions of the fire. Right? So whom they all fiha in it in her in this fire, holidun they will be staying forever. So here again, Allah Taala is using the active participle of forever and plural form because there will be many who will be. Doing this kind of a thing of denying uh, and disbelieving. Okay. So, and those who disbelieved and denied are signs, those are the companions of the fire, they will abide therein eternally. We have seen this. Our signs, like Ashabun Nar, Ashabun Nari, Ashabun Nari, companions of the fire, whom fiha, they in it. Khalidun will remain forever, will live eternally. Okay? So ayat has different meanings, the signs of the universe. Ayat, what does it mean? The signs in the universe, the earth, the sun, the moon, the fruits, the, the things around us, the creatures that Allah has created, the trees that Allah has created, everything all around us, the, the mountains, the rivers, everything are signs and ayat of Allah. The miracles of the prophets, which uh, the, the miracles of the prophets sit with the permission of Allah, are also ayat of Allah. The verses of the Quran, each verse of the Quran, each ayat of the Quran is a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these are Allah's words. Okay? So all these ayat clearly show that there is a creator. This we have discussed before and we have to believe in it. Okay, then who is going to take this part of the ayat? Uh, Rashid sahab, aap karenge? Inshallah. Okay. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahirrahman ar-rahim. Wal-lazina kafaru wa kazzabu biayatina ulaika ashabun nar. Hum fiha khalidun. Wal-lazina kafaru. And those who disbelieved. Wa-kazzabu. And denied. Bi ayatina. Our signs. Ulaika. Those. Ashabun nar. Are the companions of the fire. Hum fiha khalidun. They will abide therein eternally. Mashallah. Good. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah, your, everybody's uh, recitation also is getting better. Alhamdulillah. Good. So, with this, the two ayahs, if we take together, we said, go down from it, all of you. And when there comes to you guidance from me, then whoever follows my guidance, then they will have no fear, nor will they grieve. And those who disbelieve and deny our signs, they are companions of the fire and they will abide in it forever. These are the two ayahs and the meanings of these two ayahs. But again, they have profound meanings. And we have to search for this guidance because Allah Ta'ala has, has promised that definitely guidance is going to come from Him. We have to search where this guidance is and if we are failing in searching, our whole purpose of His life and the mission of the life will be there. So uh, the lessons we will go over it again. Adam A.S. sent down as Khalifa on the earth. Guidance is from Allah alone. Ya yannakum, ya yannakum. Guidance from Allah alone. Those who follow it will enter Jannah. Those who reject it will enter hell. 
carefully uh, make dua to Allah Taala. Allah Taala help me to become a serious student of the Quran and the Hadith to know the guidance. So uh, and make a sample plan. I will memorize at least one ayah every week so that the guidance stays fresh in my mind. So people who have started uh, with this course, we have taken almost uh, uh, more than twenty weeks for this, and each. Week, if you would have done one ayah, you already memorized thirty-five, thirty-seven ayat of the of the surah, and now uh, the thirty-eighth ayah. So plan that every week at least you can memorize these these ayat, and then they will be a part of you, inshallah. And you can recite it and ascend in the highest levels of jannah, inshallah. So let's uh, see the asma and of all the nouns and the verbs uh, that are there in these ayat. So ayatun is a single ayat, and the plural of that is ayat. That is what is used here. Ayat, that is plural, signs. There is only one plural there, and then we have the verbs. The two comes from habata yah betu, and this is on the pattern of daraba bab daraba. So habata yah betu ehbit habit mahbut and hubut. Okay, so this is the a uh, whole conjugation of the verbs and the nouns tabi'a means to obey to follow so tabi'a yatba'u is from bab sami'a so tabi'a tabi'a yatba'u itba order itba tabi' the follower matbu the thing that is followed taba'a taba'un is following obeying hazina he was sad yahzanu he is sad But on the bab samia, hazina yahzanu, ehzan, become sad. Hazin, person who is sad. Mahzun, thing for which he is sad. And huznun is sadness. Okay. So these are the verbal nouns and the uh, verbs of these words that have come. The trilateral sound verbs that have come. Okay. Then on the bab nasara we have kafara, which we have seen so many times. Kafara, yakfuru, ukfur, kafir, makfur, and kufr. Then khalada yakhludu again on Bab Nasara khalada yakhludu ukhludu khalid dash there is no passive form of this because it is eternal and khulud khuludun right means eternity khuludun is eternity okay so those were the the sound verbs and then we ah uh, we'll see the the weak verbs also ata yati ata came yati comes iti come Atin, the comer, the one who comes. Matiun, the thing that comes. Itian, coming. Okay, and then we have ada, the ya alif makdura. So same pattern on ata, ada, ada yahdi ihdi, adin, guide the one who guides. Mahdiun, the one who is guided. So from that comes the name Imam Mahdi, Mahdiun. Kudan, guidance and hidaya. The two verbal nouns for the word offer that comes on the pattern of zada. So khafa ya khafu khaf. We had zada ya zadu zad, right? Khaf kha khaif the person who is fearing khaif zaid khaif mach machuf the thing that is feared and khaufun khaufun is fear. This uh, we have seen the second book, all the weak words, and these are the uh, revision of these weak words in these uh, ayat that we have seen today. So with this, we have uh, sort of completed the Quranic uh, part of it, and inshallah, we step on to the uh, grammar part for today. Okay.
Okay, is it seen now? Are you, are you able to see now those slides? Okay, <clears throat> so this is the introduction to the Mazid fee verbs that inshallah we'll be uh, doing today. And this is just a revision of the second and the first book. The first blue thing is the first book that we've seen. In that we saw the Bab Fatah, Bab Nasara, Bab Daraba, Bab Sami'a. These are the, the sound verbs. Now, when there is three alphabets coming, Wow, Hamza, or Ya in it, then it becomes weak. And we saw the example of Wahaba, Yahabu, Hab, Wa'ada, Ya'idu, Id. And then we saw Qala and Zada. Qala Yaqulu, Zada Yazidu. Zid and Qala Yaqulu, Qul. Da'a, we saw, and Hada. So these were the weak uh, words, and then we saw the double verbs with the shadda, vanna, and balla. Right? This is all what we saw in the second book, and now we are going to do the mazid fee. So just to understand the concept of what this mazid fee is, so the verb has an extra three letters. It is extra letters apart from the three letters. Then it is called the mazid fee. Mazid means extra. This comes from the word zada yazidu. Mazid extra fee in it. There is extra alphabets in it. Mazid fee, simple, right? So, just to give uh, uh, your feeling of what this mazid fee is, let us take the example from English. Uh, we take the verb write, right? To write. So, this is how we will make the conjugation of uh, write. Uh, he wrote, they wrote, you wrote, uh, I wrote, you all wrote, we wrote, and she wrote. And he writes, they write, you write, I write, you all write, we write, she writes. In Arabic, we have the conjugation of this. So the pattern will be followed in, in the uh, all the verbs. Order will be write, write you all, don't write, don't write you all, writer, thing that is written, and to write. So now these are all the types that, that, that the word write can give. Now instead of write, we just add re in front of it. So the whole verb which was just write now becomes rewrite, which gives a different meaning. Right? And then we can make the same conjugation of this. Uh, with the word rewrite. They, he rewrites. They re yeah. Here the screen I think is uh, a bit enlarged. So we are not getting the full uh, uh, screen properly. You are getting it cut off now. Okay, okay. I'll just uh, stop and share it again then, inshallah. I don't know if we're having some problems today because we had a little problem with the uh, is it better now? Or still no? No, this is okay. okay. It is right now. Okay. Now that green is gone, no? Right. So uh, when we write rewrite instead of write, we have just added re in front of it. Right? But that gives a slightly different meaning. So this is how the whole conjugation can be made. That is the point. What the point is that just by adding two alphabets in front of write, we are getting a different meaning to it. Right. So rewrite is like mazid fi uh, of uh, of uh, in English. So when we have these kind of words coming in front, the meaning slightly changes. So like do we can like redo, rewrite, reestablish, zip. If you add un in front of it, it becomes unzip. Meaning becomes completely opposite. Pack, unpack. Fold, unfold, classify, declassify, motivate, demotivate, generate, degenerate, lead, mislead, align, misalign, calculate, miscalculate, cook, overcook, take, overtake, rate, overrate, price, underprice, take, undertake, and estimate, underestimate. So these are the kind of prefixes that can be added to a word, and some change in the meaning is derived by adding these prefixes. Mazid fee works in the same pattern in Arabic where some alphabet will be added or some uh, in between or different positions to give different kind of meanings. This is just a concept of what mazid fee is all about. So your root words are going to remain same, but the kind of meaning that it implies is different because of these prefixes that have been added to the basic word. So this is just an English example for you to understand what we are going to be studying in the mazid fee, right? So like for, for example, if we uh, say write, which means he has written, rewrite, which means that he is writing again. Right? Now, pack would mean that somebody is packing and unpack is completely opposite meaning of that. Motivate means to motivate somebody and demotivate is exactly opposite meaning of that. 
but here in arabic the meanings shades could change uh, depending upon what kind of uh, alphabets are used so in arabic the extra letters are added sometimes uh, before the first letter and sometimes between the first and the second letter once they are added to the root letters they stay in almost all forms of the madi and mudare they will remain same just like we wrote uh, in english rewrote and rewrites and everything uh, the the pattern follows in the same way so arabic has 14 such mazid fi styles or examples but as you know that in this course we are doing things which are most commonly repeated in the quran and that is the reason we'll be studying only five of these because we don't want to complicate things too much one and we want to see what is more commonly occurring in the quran too so that our understanding of the quran becomes easy with least efforts that we put and these type of five styles occur almost 8200 times in the quran which is almost one in every line right so now these are the examples of what we are going to study in this uh, book so uh, the basic example is faala now as we saw uh, we can add a shadda to it whatever red you are seeing here is the mazid fi so same faala becomes faala because of this shadda meanings change may change slightly we'll we'll come to the meanings later but just understand that the additional that is happening here like it was write in english and rewrite was the uh, mazid fi of english this is a shadda that is added so faala becomes faala we saw two examples of that alima becomes allama and kadhiba becomes kadhaba right now we could also have faala with an additional hamza and then it comes faala right so the example of this could be qatala means he killed and aqala means he fought so there is a little change in the meaning as we come to the words we will see the individual uh, meaning change that happens but just for now remember that this here we have a shadda added here we have an extra hamza which is added and that's why it becomes faala right so faala becomes afala if the hamza is added in front and also there is a sukun on the fa this is a third pattern that can come right the third pattern is afala right afala so this these are given uh, numbers in in english so the the basic form this one is called as form number 1 and faala is called form number 2 and faala is called form number 3 these are or sometimes in the dictionaries you will find the numbers written and the full alphabet will not be written but you should know that form number 2 which means the shadda is added form number 3 means faala and this becomes form number 4 where a uh, hamza is added right so uh faala becomes afala okay i will see the examples of each but these are the numbers that are that are given okay <clears throat> and this becomes form number 5 tafala and the istafala is form number 10 right so these are the numbers that have been given by english uh, grammarians to these uh, mazid fi patterns Okay, so in the English dictionary, you will find these Roman numbers uh, written in the dictionary, which would indicate that what kind of uh, addition is happening in the particular basic faala format. So this faala format is called form number one. Faala is two. Faala is three. Tafala is four. Tafala is five, and istafala is ten. There are other forms which are not very common, and that's why they are not uh, included here in this course. Okay, so now coming to the second form that is faala. So as we saw the example, alima becomes allama. So here we had a kasra in the past tense, but in the present tense you will always have this format, and this is fixed, and this will not change. Okay. So the other example also we will see uh, more examples. Hasiba, hasiba means he accounted, and ha saba means to account for each other. Okay, that is ha saba, ha saba hisaba yasira, hasiba. Salima, salima. So we know that it comes from the root word to be peace. Salima, he was at peace. Salima, but the fourth form is aslama, means to submit. 
and from this comes the word Islam. The root word is Salima. The fourth form becomes Aslama, and this means submission. And from this word comes the word Islam. Okay. Khalafa. Khalafa we saw was uh, to succeed and keep succeeding. Khalifa comes from this word, and it's uh, this form is Ikh Talafa. Ikh Talafa. So if ta'ala. So here you see there is one hamza which is added and one ta also which is added. Ikh talafa. Khalafa are the root words, but it becomes ikh talafa. Then we have ghafara, means he uh, he forgave, ghafara to forgive, and istaghfara. This is the tenth form. When ista is added in front of any verb. Then it meaning seeking the action of that verb. So ghafara he forgave, and istaghfara means he asked for forgiveness. So when ista comes in English, it would mean to ask that whatever the verb is there, the action of that is being asked. Ask. Okay, so ista. When ista is 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 coming, it will be ask. Okay, so the tenth form. Whenever any verb has ista in front of it, it means asking the action of that verb. So ghafara becomes istaghfara. Istaghfara. Okay. So any any verb can come. We will see examples of it as we as we go ahead. These are the additions that can happen. And these additions can change the meaning of the basic uh, word itself. So let us learn the first three mazid fihi, joining them in a sentence. So <clears throat> to know that uh, these are the first three that we are seeing: alama we saw, then hasaba we saw, and aslama we saw. Now the verbal forms of these are also fixed. So alama becomes. Abhi aariye. Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. So, allama becomes alim. Al allama will become alim. आवाज़ नहीं आ रही. अच्छा मैं वापस. नहीं आवाज़ तो ठीक है शायद मुझे शायद काई साहब का कुछ ये होगा. आवाज़ नहीं तो ठीक आवाज़ आ रही. इसमें शायद आवाज़ 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 आवाज़
مقاتلہ will be مقاتلہ مقاتلہ great fighting killing مقاتلہ اسلام اسلام so another example of this could be اخرجہ uh, and the verbal noun will be اخراج right so the pattern is going to remain same so at least if you remember the classical example then it is easy for you to uh, put other verbs into it and get the answers right so now all words and all verbs will not have all patterns some may have some patterns and some may not have some patterns okay so we'll we'll discuss that as we go ahead also inshallah so so taleem that is teaching and muhasaba calling to account for yourself are very important in islam this is how we can make a sentence and remember these forms taleem and muhasaba are very important in islam taleem and muhasaba are very important in islam it will give us the uh, verbal noun patterns of the three verbs allama hasaba and aslama allama taleem hasaba muhasaba aslama islam right so taleem and muhasaba are very important in islam if you remember this sentence inshallah you will remember the verbal nouns and uh, with that you know that taleem will have allama and muhasaba that this alif will guide you that this is hasaba and islam will guide you that it is aslama okay this is just a sort of introduction to the first three that we are going to take we are going to take each example as we go ahead in each class so inshallah that will get fixed in your minds let us learn the next two mazid fi of the uh, words ikhtilafa ikhtilafa we already know we already have so much ikhtilaf happening all around us ikhtilafa means to differ and in urdu it will be ikhtilaf karna simple the same thing oh, arabic meaning ikhtilaf ikhtilaf green has also again zoom green has zoom okay so we cannot see you anything here Okay. Okay. No. I'll stop share and I will. Some problem today with Zoom. <clears throat> okay. So we will. Net connection here is okay. Now the scene. Uh. Now are you seeing it? Yeah. Now it is okay. Yes. Yes. Now it is okay. Okay. So, ikhtilaf is to differ, and this word comes from ikhtilafa. he deferred and istighfar is to ask for forgiveness and it comes from the word istighfar so istighfar is the verb here istighfar is the verb and ikhtilaf ikhtilaf is the verb and ikhtilafun is the noun verbal noun istighfar he asked for forgiveness and istighfar or istighfarun is asking forgiveness okay these are the verbal nouns and this also we can remember with uh, uh, an order to ourselves that do not differ don't waste your time in ikhtilaf use it for istighfar this is how you can remember the whole five uh, mazid fi words that we are going to do so taleem and muhasaba are important in islam don't waste your time in ikhtilaf use it in istighfar this is the full sentence which you can memorize and that will give you the memory for five mazid fi verbs that we are going to learn in this third course right so if you keep repeating this it will be very easy so taleem and muhasaba are very important in islam don't waste your time in ikhtilaf and use it in istighfar alhamdulillah so this is the whole sentence for us to remember these mazid fi forms taleem and muhasaba are very important in islam don't waste your time in ikhtilaf use it in istighfar So, inshallah, in the next nine lessons, we will be practicing each of these mazid fi verbs differently, and we'll take examples of all that and these styles, uh, five styles that occur uh, very commonly in the Quran. So, this third book is dedicated to mazid fi, right? So, just remember these formats. Write it down. Uh, the sheets uh, now, uh, the, the amount of uh, um, the material that the the site uh, website shares goes on reducing as we go higher in the courses because They expect that now the basics for you are clear, so that they, uh, that's why the whole book was shared because earlier we were getting each a uh, PDF separately. But here I have shared the whole book. I think I we just have about one or two books in the uh, in the clinic. So if somebody wants, they can come. But we'll order them, and if uh, people are interested, so let me know in the group. So we'll order accordingly that many numbers so that uh, you all can uh, 
have the uh, book in your hands because that learning is more more easy and uh, you have a book with you uh, that the revision becomes easier and even if you don't have any digital format you can still revise and memorize right so remember this sentence for today taleem and muhasaba are very important in islam don't waste your time in ikhtilaf utilize it in istighfar okay and because this is a whole essence of the whole book is going to be these this sentence and we will be repeating again this sentence inshallah many times like we have repeated the other things of the other books so that is the these are key points for memory so that uh, you don't forget what is already learned this is a homework that we always discuss two on tilawa five minutes from the mushaf five minutes from the memory uh, two on the book so study the vocabulary study the pocket book listen to the mp3s and talk about the course teach others and that will uh, sort of uh, make things easy for you and all these videos of these are also available online so you can watch them if you have missed anything in class so whenever i say halim teach pause the video and practice so now we know that whenever uh, uh, the the alim was coming it was coming from teach that is an order for teach inshallah we'll take this uh, in the next session because the uh, alim is the word to be covered next time inshallah okay so they have their uh, things and they have a lot of courses for kids also so uh, you all can take benefit of that okay so may allah help us to recite understand ponder implement propagate and memorize the quran so subhanallah amen allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik this has stop share uh, we had some difficulty with the youtube today so the, this is not going to be live on youtube as i told you we'll be trying and uploading this uh, on the uh, youtube uh, because we are recording it so inshallah we uh, will plan to do that but normally we had had the live uh, uh, youtube going on that is not going to happen today we have to ch check that out what is the problem with right so any questions regarding today we have not really done too much of heavy grammar it is just an introduction to what mazid fi is all about Uh, we just saw a little bit of uh, mudaf mudaf ilahi inshallah we'll take that because the earlier books had mudaf mudaf ilahi quite earlier but in this format uh, mudaf il mudaf ilahi is not there so i thought we'll because it is important we'll just cover it uh, as and when it comes today we saw ashab an nari that is companions of the fire then we could have ashab al kahf we could have baitullah we can have a lot of examples rasul allah is also mudaf mudaf ilahi rasul of allah right so that way any other questions for today's uh, class What is that? Uh, what is the tenth form? Istafala. Istafala. That's right. So from that comes istaghfara, and what it means is asking the action of that verb. Okay. So that that is there in the book. Huh? No, it is. It is there. It is there. So ghafara means he forgave. Ah, the book. The the chart, no. Ah, uh, the chart is what? not there. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll take that because it's a simple thing. And this stuck for a word is repeated form. so many times. Forms of the mazid fi. Correct. Fa ala fa ala fa ala fa ala af ala if ala is the fa ala. Is the fa ala. That that chart is not there. Okay. Inshallah, we are there. Full ten forms. Inshallah, I will uh, just share it in the group. So uh, uh, only if we are, we are, even if we are doing only the five. At least you have an idea of what the others are. So whenever they come, you'll know. Okay, okay, this is from Mazid Fi. At least recognition of that uh, you should know. Even if you are not doing it as a part of the course, uh, I'll share that ten uh, uh, forms of the uh, verbs, inshallah. Right. So any other uh, queries for today? Today's uh, Quran part has that important thing of Khawfun Alehim. Just have uh, understanding of that. Because uh, normal translations don't give uh, the, uh, the complete understanding of alehim in it. Yeah, I want to cl clarify this mm -hmm. one point about the madda, no? Mm -hmm. the, because uh, Friday I was listening to the Firat uh, of mm -hmm. Imam Sudais. Yeah. So I made a, I mean, observed a difference in madda, mm -hmm. like the ayatina. Is mm -hmm. a different mud and ulaika. He he extends more because there is yeah. some it shape is a bit uh, different. Yes, yes, yes. So that is mudde lazim. Ulaika is mudde lazim and it has to be uh, uh, prolonged. Prolonged four counts. So normally, the other, uh, other uh, ayatina, the, the mud of ayatina, the mud of ayatina should be only twice. 
Oh. And if if Imam Sudesh is 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 reading past, then sometimes he may not even uh, uh, prolong that mud. Yeah. Because there are some kari's uh, who prolong it two, but those but those those kari's who prolong that as two will prolong ulaika at at almost four. So when they will say ayati na ulaika, you know, and if the if they are not prolonging that uh, ayati na mud, then they will uh, prolong ulaika only twice. So ayati na ulaika, so that way. So better is better is yeah, better is to. to uh, keep it two counts uh, for uh, ayatina and for ulaika it should be four counts but even the shape is different on this two yeah the shape is different because uh, there are all rules for mud and uh, there are some five types of mud depending on where the mud mud lies and uh, you know, that is again the part of the tajweed uh, so as i said that everybody should try and see that they take coaching for tajweed uh, with some some kari who can clarify this uh in more details inshallah I, if you if they are interested i will share this uh uh mud uh mud details in the group also inshallah please repeat that khawful alaihim if you don't mind yeah sure khawful so, alaihim yeah yeah so khawful alaihim one is uh to say that i am fearing something so so i i gave the example of the snake and the child right now child is playing with uh, a toy snake suppose and because it is looking very dangerous the child is fearing sound is not clear sound is not clear okay the breaking sound is breaking okay okay i will just right now is it clear i uh, yes okay so the example i gave was uh two examples one is a child is playing with a toy snake which is looking dangerous okay now the child is fearing oh, it one sorry it was breaking so the child sorry, i i didn't get it again it was breaking okay okay there is some uh, internet issue it was breaking okay i'll just hold on acha acha okay <clears throat> so one is a child is playing with a toy snake and this toy snake is looking very dangerous right so now the child is fearing that toy snake okay this 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 part is clear a child is fearing a toy snake because it is looking dangerous but is there any danger on the child no because it is a toy snake right so one is khawfun <clears throat> so the child is fearing is khawfun but the khawfun alaihim there is no fear on the child because it is a toy snake on the other side if the child is playing with a real snake and because he doesn't know the danger of the snake the child is not fearing the snake but is there fear on the child yes so that is khawfun alaihim means there is an actual fear there so here allah taala is saying that la khawfun alaihim there is there is no fear or no chance of fear only okay did you understand the difference now or still not clear sorry sorry still not clear okay i'll go over it again so one situation is that a child is playing with a toy snake which is looking dangerous okay is there any danger on the child with the toy snake no 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 danger right no. so la khawfun alaihim there is no fear on the child la khawfun alaihim but the child is getting afraid so that is khawf for the child in on the other side if the, the child is playing if the child is playing with a real snake but he is not afraid of it is there danger to the child hmm. yeah you can unmute your mic so is there danger on the child when the child is playing with a real snake yes yeah right so khawfun alaihi means there is actual fear and normal khauf there may be fear or we fear so many things but are those fear always justified may not be but when there is no khauf alaihim means actually there is no no real reason for danger there is no danger at all right so khaufun alaihim there means that even if people are fearing when we stand in front of allah subhanahu wa taala or when we are standing on the day of qiyama it is going to be a fearful situation but here allah is saying even if they are fearing 
actually there is no fear on them understood now yeah on them understood or no yeah yes yes Okay, so the, the the situation is such that you might be fearing something, but actually there is nothing uh, to be feared about. That is the whole thing. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. It is a, it is it's basically conceptual understanding. So the concept is there, and if we understand that, inshallah, that is what is. Uh, right. Any other questions? No other questions. Last week test. Uh, yeah, so I've not been able to uh, to uh, to uh, correct that. Inshallah, I will do it in a couple of days and then send the answers for whoever is uh, written that. And I think some uh, of you all had asked for a delay uh, this thing. So if you're finished, then you can send it to us. Inshallah, uh, in a couple of days we'll send you the uh, answers and the scores uh, on the group. Inshallah. But the paper was repeated actually last time. No, no, some no, of no. some of no, some of it was repeated. Uh, this was the whole uh, thing last time. A part of it was uh, given. So some questions would have been repeated because they were from the last two or uh, three sessions. Uh, uh, that is the third. But this time paper was a complete of the whole uh, thing. Jamia means. Uh... Jamia means all all together. Jamia. So it's all of you. So it is all, all. It just Asiyah indicates all. Set. Hmm. Or Aradhuma. Or Aradhum. Hmm. O sab na? O sab. Aradhum means to present. Jamia means all, all, all together. Jama. The reference of of Aradhum. Hmm. In previous ayat. Hmm. Is a. They saw everything, no? Including yeah, yeah. souls and whatever. Correct. Ka. Correct. Correct. Um, for generations after Adam. Yes. Up to the and all the prophets. Right. So the Jamia will include everything, no? Yeah, Jamia means means all all of you. But all there, since the the Abitu is being an order given to Adam alayhi salam and Shaitan uh, and Bibi Hawa, so here it it is uh, indicating these three. All of you all uh, go down. So. Because with Adam, all his progeny would have also come down because they were in his loins, and uh, that's how all of us came the, down. So it earth. is written far uh, too, but actually, they were ordered to go, no? They were ordered to go, but actually, they cannot go from sky. No, to, uh, so, uh, so that how it happened, we are not uh, very sure on that. But when Allah Taala has ordered something, kun fa yakun, Allah Taala says something become and it, it becomes. So He will make the means for it. He will make the means for it that way. But actually, they were descended down, no? Yes, yes, they would have been sent. All the facilities were there. Yes, maybe the angels, angels got them down or whatever. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. for the prophet that uh, he was, he was also ascended up, taken up. So ah. uh, at one point, Jibril Salam said, "Now I can't come beyond this." So Allah Taala would have made the means for that. So Sidratul Munta. Allah Taala had a plan that I'm going to place a Khalifa on the earth. He would have made uh, plans for that, and how it exactly happened, we are not very clear on that. But that is not the that is not, not that is not going to change our uh, thought process or uh, anything like that. Today's ayat there is no masjid fee, no. No, there is no no. Yeah, there is a kazaba is a masjid fee. Kazaba. Kazaba had a shadda, so that is from the masjid fee. So inshallah, we'll take that. The next session is going to be the first uh, allama pattern only. So for Allah, that is, that was Mazid fee. Yeah. So the repeated uh, form is normally this. Previous also we uh, learn no zanna or dalla. No, no, is that was thing? that was the verb having a repetition in okay. itself. Huh. That is different from Mazid fee. That was not Mazid fee. Zanna had wa noon noon as the root words, root alphabets. Okay. So here the root alphabets is going to be three only. And on addition, we have a shadda or a hamza coming in any position, or if the ala having hamza and ta, or is the having hamza seen and ta. So that is different from zanna and dalla. So zanna and dalla are having within the root words a repetition. Mm-hmm. That is are, not that is not mazid. Including uh, even if it is a shadda, is in, uh, three three letter including zanna. Yes. 
And yes. here it becomes more than three. Correct. Absolutely. So that is why it is mazid fee. So zanna has three only. Allah has three only. So that is not mazid fee. And allama has an extra shadda on the top of the three. That's why this is mazid fee. And the good part about mazid fee is that the pattern remains constant for everything. So if you do pattern of one, everything is going to remain same. Unlike as you saw in the trilateral, it could be bab nasara, bab daraba, and all that different babs. Here, the pattern is going to remain same. I, that will study as we go ahead, inshallah. Today was just an introduction to that, that to make you understand what this mazid fee is all about. Once we take each example, inshallah, it will be more clear to you. If you have got the form of all, hmm. mazid fee, please share it. No, I didn't get you. Mazid fee forms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there are, forms. Yeah, there are 14 forms. So, inshallah, I'll share the, all the 14. All the 14. Uh, yeah, but, oh, but in this, uh, this course, course it will be covered during no, this. In this course, it will be only five of them which are covered because they, these are the common ones repeated in the Quran. As we are studying uh, the most common ones repeated, so it doesn't become very heavy. <clears throat> As we saw, in, we did not cover the dual part, but we took it when the ayat came. So, uh, Otherwise, a lot of confusion happens and people forget everything then. So we are taking things which are very important and trying to uh, be good at that. So shall I share that uh, all 14 forms, but uh, we'll study only five here in the course. Thank you.